It's Madden NFL 24, where representatives from the AFC and NFC will square off. It's the Falcons and the Silver and Black, and it comes your way next. Well, there's never a shortage of shows or sights and sounds throughout this city, but for the next few hours, all eyes are glued to Allegiant Stadium here in Las Vegas. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here, as it'll be the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis with you from our broadcast perch. And Charles, as we get this thing started, what are you going to be keeping your eye on? Special teams. Field position is always a big determiner in a ball game. Who sets their offense up for success the best? That team will win the game. And we are underway here in Las Vegas. On the return, Trey Tucker. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So here comes the Raider offense now onto the field. They'll be led out by Gardner Minshew, six-round selection in 2019 out of Washington State. And how about this young man? Took the NFL world by storm as a six-round rookie, signature mullet, mustache, but 21 touchdowns for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great personality, and everyone gravitates towards this guy. Teammates love to win with a quarterback who leads them like that, and fans love to root for a guy who seems just like them. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. But we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A Raider first down, 17 yards. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Minshew, first and 10. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. So certainly a defensive mistake here in the first quarter, getting hit with a roughing the passer call. And that hurts not just because of the yardage you gave up and give him a fresh set of downs, but that brought the home crowd into this one. And when you go on the road, your job is to silence the crowd, not energize them. Now Minshew on first and 10. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. First carry now for Alexander Madison. Gets past one man, and he'll get it down here to the 43. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Naturally so, the defense was keyed in on everyone but the back on that play, and it took them an extra second to react when he got the carry. 
It's still a tough third down to pick up here, but a lot more manageable after an excellent carry on second down. Here's Minshew. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. The kick by Carlson is good, and the Raiders jump out to a 3-0 advantage. Had just the one big play on the drive, but that was enough to put him in field goal range. Yeah, one big play of what they hope will be many others throughout the game. Every team has a different target for the number of plays like that, those explosives that we talk about. That allowed him to put points on the board on that drive. Let's see how the rest of the game goes. Sets up to kick this away. McLeod now on the return. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They are led out by their veteran quarterback hailing from Michigan State, and we like that. It's Kirk Cousins. And one nice thing you can always say about Kirk Cousins is that he's consistent. Always puts up nice numbers each and every year. If there is a downside to his game, it's been the lack of playoff success. All in all, though, a formidable starting quarterback at a time in the league where it's tough to find your franchise guy. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And now the rookie's free. And all the way down to the 26. It's a big play there for Atlanta. And even 50 yards. Well, welcome to the party. First carry of the game. How about that? And just think, as far as he's concerned, he's just getting warmed up. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Cousins to throw it. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 15 more yards there, and quickly another first down. Every guy that plays this game has plenty of people around him that are concerned for his health and well-being. He had no regard for his body on that catch at all, did he? <laughs> Middle of the field, diving to grab it? No, he didn't. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. And that'll be a free five yards for the offense. Just like a tennis match, that's just an unforced error. Stay alert. Don't jump early and give them free yardage. They will come up on a first and five following the encroachment penalty. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Now second and five. Snap will come from the six. Now Cousins. Touchdown, Falcons! Kyle Pitts from six yards away. And the Falcons have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. The big fellow was the recipient there for that touchdown pass, and it seems like more and more the tight end is the guy you have to worry about most in the passing game. Now the try here for the extra point. He's got it. They'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three.
Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. For the returner, Trey Tucker, going to bring this one out. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points. And this time will be intercepted. Picked up by A.J. Terrell. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. Oh, and I saw the pressure coming at him. That just looked problematic. Hit him as he threw it, and the interception ensued. Let me pay homage to the man who stood in this spot before. He always talked about how much pressure is in the face of a guy, and can he step into a throw. And when you can't do that, oftentimes interceptions result. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. They'll run this one right with Robinson. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 72 yards rushing for him now as he has gotten the night off to a hot start. Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right. And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. Tyler Algier. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Ku able to connect on the extra point. And that pushes the lead up to 11. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And this fielded right at the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he's going to be down at the 35. Gain of seven. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. From the 35, here's second down and three. It's Myers again with another catch. Four yards, the pickup, first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, 
And it's second down. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Minshew sets to throw. That's to the Notre Dame man, Michael Mayer. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Throwing on first down is Minshew. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. David Onyemata gets him for a loss of eight. One great push up front. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage. But right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward. And how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. With these run pass options, we often talk about a good quarterback and running back. Well, having a talented wide receiver helps also. Yeah, even coming in third in the discussion, sometimes that means he really should be first because all you want to do is get the ball in their hands and let them make the big plays downfield. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 32-yard line. After one, a 14-3 ball game. Second quarter from Vegas, the homestanding Raiders with a football here. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Minshew. That one tipped and it's incomplete. What good hands there defensively. That's second down. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. It'll be Minshew again. And he will score. Touchdown, Las Vegas. Alexander Madison, 32 yards. And the Raiders have got it back to within a score. Well, forget about the weapons out wide. He knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game, Charles, and he utilized him perfectly on that play. And the offense coordinator showed me something on that play, Brandon, because so often during a game, our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets, and you wonder if they're absorbing anything. He had something specific in mind, and he went to it, and it worked well. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that makes it a 14-10 ball game. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. So out come the Falcons now. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, and right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because Every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. So the completion results there in nine yards, and it'll bring up a second and short. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal 
get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Robinson up the middle. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. 80 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll run again here with Robinson. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Option play. Here's Robinson, and he'll get it down to the 47 here. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Cousins throw taken in by London. And he's got this down to the 35. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for a first down for the Falcons. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Cousins now to throw on first down. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Now a second and ten. Play action now. Cousins. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Cousins now. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 16. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, Cousins. Over the middle, it's complete. And the Falcons are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. They'll run with Robinson. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. B. John Robinson, a five-yard touchdown run. And they are able to add on to their advantage. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there, and each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And that makes it a 21-10 game. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. 
This taken in at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. No gain on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch. But even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss. But that window closed quickly. Throwing on second down now, Minshew. That's into the hands of Gallup over the middle. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Looking to throw it, Minshew. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air. And I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. They'll look to throw again. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll take this from 147-yard line to the other, a gain of six. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. Out of the gun is Minshew. Pressure brought in. Falcons get there for the sack. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. He continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. And these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. So on fourth down, here's A.J. Cole to punt for the Raiders. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. Not too shabby here. This will skip out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. B. John Robinson and the Falcons back onto the field. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Game clock at 2.01. Time for one final play before the two-minute warning. On first and 10, Cousins. He's going to look deep for more. And got his man complete. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. So how about this for a change in field position? From inside the 10, here's first down on the other side of the field. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he's down into the red zone at the 16 after a gain of 16. First and 10. Well, the obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. What's the deal, y'all? Now they nabbed the rookie there for the five-yard penalty. So much going through his head. You know it just has to be, right? All of his assignments and realizing every game he plays, one of the better players in the league will be opposite him. 
Here's a screen for Robinson. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that will bring up second down. He's had success running the football. And this is more or less an extension of that because they drop it off to him on the screen. And I'll bet he's thinking to himself, if I didn't have to slow up a bit here in traffic, I could have really made something out of that one. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Second down and eight. Now Cousins. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. A good job in coverage there. They took away his top read on the play, so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back. He scored on their last possession, but the coverage held. It goes incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. To the air again, it's Cousins. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. In their locker room, they've got a sign that says defense wins championships. And Charles, they pointed to that this week, said that has to be us looking good early. I like how you saw that because of the bold letters, right? You saw the emphasis that they place on that and what they believe in. And for them, it's every single snap. So it's not just a matter of getting to the quarterback and knocking the ball free. They're trying to read when that ball's going to come free. As soon as those hands separate to throw the ball, they want to be there and have a chance to knock it out. Now Minshew on first and ten. And his throw is incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Here's Minshew. Going to take a shot for Gallup. And incomplete on the deep ball. Trying to get something positive to happen here before the break, and they sure need it. They went for the big one, but it winds up incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. This time they stay on the ground, and he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line well short of the first down marker. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. Good coverage there holds him to just a two-yard return following a punt of 44. And out will come the offense as they take over. And the Falcons going to get one more drive here in this first half. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. A little over 20 seconds remaining in the half as they'll line up here first and 10. Throwing. Cousins. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And they will set up shop with outstanding field position in the red zone at the 17-yard line. He already had the one fumble loss, so now two fumbles lost here in this first half. Not setting the pace the way that you want it done. I mean, here in the first half, already twice the ball's come out and hit the turf. Got to find a way to take care of it. Otherwise, they may have to start thinking about maybe someone different at that position.
So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. And they'll run on the inside handoff. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They're going to look to throw. Got his tight end. That's complete. That's Bowers. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll set up to throw. And that's going to be caught for a Raider touchdown. Devontae Adams in the final seconds of the first half. And the Raiders are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. Terrific. Touchdown. I know we've got a game now. Yeah, I think anytime you go into the second half down just one or two scores, you feel not where you want to be, but in a pretty good spot. And I think for most teams, when they go into the half in this situation, it's not a lot of adjusting going on. It's much more, all right, guys, let's just play a little bit better than we did in the first half. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And it's now 21-17. So not much time to work with here. Nine seconds remain in the half as this one is away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're going to get right back to it. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. The Falcons offense ready to get going to begin this third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. A first down throw for Cousins. And this is taken in by Darnell Mooney. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. You always worry about those smaller receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. 
But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. A give to Robinson on the option. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. 108 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick. He's been decisive. And he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Cousins on first down. And caught by London. Touchdown, Falcons! Drake London, 48 yards, as his guys are able to extend their lead. The catch and the touchdown, they were the end result of a terrific route run by the receiver. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it was finished off by a touchdown catch from Drake London. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in you can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially but you have to do it without pressing because pressing that'll lead you into bigger errors Minshew first and ten very quick throw he's got Myers he'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31 they kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here's Madison running left. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Minshew sets to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It goes as a gain of nine, and it moves the chains. For as many sacks as this defense has, you can understand their willingness to try and get upfield and get another. So what a really smart play call here to use their aggression against them, go with the screen, and they're able to get the first down. Now Minshew. Oh, the slam connects with Devontae Adams. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. A pickup of 10, and it's enough for a Las Vegas first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Man, just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. 
Here's Madison getting it again on second. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. The pickup goes for 16 and a Raider first down. That was good tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Throwing left side, it's complete. And he will score. Touchdown, Las Vegas. A great effort there. 33 yards. And the Raiders are back within a score. So a strong drive here to lead off this third quarter and gets him right back in this football game. And I think we can safely call that a statement drive because they had to be saying, we have put our best foot forward in the first half, but we certainly mean business now. Maybe a better term, a prove-it drive. They proved it to themselves that they were ready to go. And Minshew will throw for it. And he is going to get in. But there is a flag down. Let's sort this out here. Well, that flag puts them on their heels a little bit more defensively as the officials walk it upfield. Yeah, and they can blame the officials all they want, but bottom line, it's their own fault because, to me, that was an avoidable call. Stay focused and avoid major mistakes like that. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Atlanta prepped and readied for its next possession. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. Start on the ground with Robinson here. Good footwork at the 30. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. On play action, Cousins. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and get the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. And that's why he spent a first-round draft pick on a running back. Not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third-and-ones, third-and-twos. That's why you draft him. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to Robinson now on first down. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 133 yards rushing for him now as his big night continues. He continues to have a big night here under the lights carrying the football. And some guys prefer night games for whatever reason. Their bodies react a certain way. They love the spotlight. Maybe that's what it is. The best seats in the house, the ones where he's carrying the football for his offensive teammates, the worst seats... 11 guys trying to tackle him on defense. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. 
Into double coverage, and it's intercepted. And the Raiders are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. So this offense moving the ball well, trying to open up a two-score lead here in the third quarter, but now potentially a play that could have big ramifications. Yeah, you've driven the ball down the field. Things are looking up, but it takes just one bad decision to throw things off the rails. Now here again comes Gardner Minshew. He really continues to pick apart this defense. Last drive, perfect, and it culminated in his third touchdown pass. As long as we've been doing this, how many times has a player in this type of a zone described the game as really slowed down? Yep. So right now, instead of warp speed, it's snail's just, pace. Oh, snail's pace for him, and he can do whatever he wants. Feels like he has all the time in the world to throw the ball, and his offensive line has been giving him that. Throwing on first down is Minshew. He finds his man complete. It's Bowers. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. On second down, Minshew. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Bowers. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because... He really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? Yeah, they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. But not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum. They were moving the football. But something to at least build on for this offense as they run back out here. Yeah, you're right about that. Up until that last play, everything was working pretty well for this offense. Gaining chunks of yardage, getting first downs, really making a push for the end zone and looked like they had a nice rhythm going. Now you got to have a short memory here. Don't focus on the interception. Focus on what came before it and get back to it. Cousins now on second down. And he's going to lose yardage here. As they will switch ends as time has run out on this third quarter of play. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. Back now in Las Vegas. Welcome back, everybody. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. Cousins now to throw on first down. This pass is caught by London. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, <laughs> stomped down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Meanwhile, Cousins throw into the hands of Pitts here. 
Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. That's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. They go play action. Cousins. And now another one thrown incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. Two knocks this one through the post, and that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. The putter pinion now to kick this one away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Out of the gun is Minshew. At this point in the second half, one mistake on a forced throw could doom your chances of a comeback, so that's the right call there to just throw that one away. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Now here's a handoff out of the gun. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That good for 19 and a first down. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? The ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Here's Madison running on first down. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Here's Madison getting it again on second. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. From Falcon territory now, here's first and ten at the 47. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. We knew both of these safeties were good in run support, but how about the play we just saw there? How about that closing speed? Able to get to the outside part of the field and turn that play into a loss. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Looking to throw it. Minshew. And this one is incomplete. 
Some coaches like to take the shorter, more reliable yardage, and some, they like to go for the big shot. No fear in risking a deep ball there, but it wasn't enough to get him the completion. Seventh play in this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. They'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. Here's A.J. Cole now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. We'll get another look at Drake London as this offense returns to the field. And I know that they've double-teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, really. And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Tyree Wilson using that athletic ability to make the play. A CD, a little bit of feast or famine for him. He's had some success throwing the football, but also now he's been sacked four times. Yeah, you just mentioned the four sacks, but you're right. He has managed to hang in there and make plays at times. His offensive line, they've got to figure it out and pick things up and give him more opportunities. And he has to help them by getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker as well. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. Oh, man, late in the tight ball game, every play so critical, you feel like you've got to find a way to come up with that football. That was put in a great spot, but it just didn't want to stick in his hands. That's a big letdown. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And it'll be Raiders football first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He finds his man complete. It's Bowers. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Throwing on second down now, Minshew. Ball delivered complete on the crossing route, Gallup. And he's got a first down as he's going to be taken down. But a very nice pick up there just in front of the two-minute warning. So it's Raider football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. A throw over the middle taken in. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now... In this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Second and six coming up. Now Minshew. Open man is Myers. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 38-yard line. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Here's Minshew. 
He's got his man. It's Gallup. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Brandon's okay what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. All three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and ten now. Minshew. And that is caught. Touchdown. And they're an extra point away from taking the lead here in the final minute. Now they can boot it through on the always important extra point, and then their defense has to hold up their end of the bargain. And there's something that you've pointed out in numerous games that we've worked. Okay, the excitement's going on. Everyone's celebrating over there. Who's calling up the defense to make sure they're focused because they still have some work to do? A very important extra point there. Up and good. And that is going to put them on top by a point, and it sets us up for quite a finish. Touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. Taken at the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. So Kirk Cousins in the offense. Down by one. A little over 30 seconds remaining. Needing at least 40 yards, you'd have to think, to have a shot. Now Cousins. A quick throw there is incomplete. They'll try again here. Second and ten. Cousins to throw. Now Robinson coughs up the football. It's loose. And the Raiders pick it up. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, they got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. I don't think next week at practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week. And I believe the referee's been buzzed. Yeah, they want to take another look at this call, and it's certainly a big one here late in a tight game. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. Well, the black hole and everyone in Vegas on their feet. Here's third down now. Here's Cousins. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. Pardon me, they've got one chance left to keep this one going. And I think for you and me, let's think along with their offensive coordinator now. Has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest and remember what's worked and what has it. Because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one alive. 
That's caught by Pitts. And he will have the conversion on fourth down. He's out of bounds as well to keep their hopes alive. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Cousins. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. And I believe the referee's been buzzed. Yeah, they want to take another look at this call, and it's certainly a big one here late in a tight game. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field... So the folks in New York just going to wind up confirming what the officials saw as this play will stand as is. They come up now on second and two. He'll look to throw. That's going to be caught by Pitts. Now they burn the timeout. And they're kind of in that gray area where they might be able to get two plays in, but maybe just one play left in this ball game. We'll see. Here's first down. Back to throw. This for all the marbles. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. So the game will continue for at least one more play. To not finish a game on a defensive penalty, that's why they get one more untimed attempt. And it is good! He splits the uprights on the chip shot, and the Falcons are going to win the game! So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And a little bit of a surprise, they lose the turnover battle, but wind up winning the ballgame. And this is very unusual because you know all teams stress winning the turnover battle as a key indicator to winning ballgames. So when you get something that goes against